Hey guys, what's up? This is Sean from Far From Average Automotive, and today we have a one of one 1995 Ford GT90 prototype car. This car is iconic for me because I used to play it in Project Gotham Racing 3, all the Ford racing games, and the OG Gran Turismo on the PlayStation. It was also really big in the Sega racing games. But then it kind of just disappeared from the public's eye. It debuted in the 1995 Detroit Auto Show. It then went to Tokyo and London, and then you haven't really seen it much. It popped up in Dallas Car Show a few months ago. But for the most part, it's been traded between Ford executives and now resides here in Oklahoma. It is one of one, so you probably will never have the chance to see this. I know I didn't think I was, but here we are. So it's pretty cool. I really like the white and blue, and I think that complements it very well. Everybody who knows me knows my dream cars are white and blue Shelby. So this is right up my alley. The rims look good, the headlights look good. It's very futuristic, even to today's standards, with it being, oh, man, how many years old is that? 30 almost? Almost 30 years old, and it still looks futuristic. And you will never see anything like this on the street. It got the complete glass roof, which I, I don't even know another car that does that. And it's just super, super iconic, but it's kind of like the one that got away. You don't ever see this anymore. It was really cool. It was a big deal back in 95 and 96 and 97, and then it just disappeared. This is probably one of the very few videos you'll see on this car online. The only one I could find was uh, Jeremy Clarkson from Top Gear. So it's really, really cool, and it's a super unique experience to be able to film this car. This was released on the 30th anniversary of the Ford GT40 being debuted for the Le Mans racing. So this is supposed to be like their race car. Why they had it come out was because McLaren had the F1 at the time, and this is Ford's middle finger to McLaren saying they have balls. This beat it statistically on everything, but this car never went in to production when McLaren F1s did. It has a very iconic front end. It got these rectangle headlights that almost kind of look like the Bugatti EV10 headlights to me. It has this floating emblem in the front where it has a hook that wraps around and forms around the bumper and catches it right here. So it looks like it's floating, but it's not. And these are fully functional vents on the front hood. Another real thing is to me is the fog lights are completely clear and white when usually fog lights to today's standards are yellow, but I guess when it's a concept car, they're never in production, looks or everything. So it's pretty cool though. This car has a carbon fiber body with a honeycomb aluminum chassis that is from a Jaguar XJ220, which is Jaguar's race car. The capabilities of this car is astonishing. It has a top speed of 253, and it goes 0 to 60 in 3.1 seconds. All the vents and everything you see that looks like a vent is completely functional because in the back it has a V12 quad turbo engine, so it needs a lot of airflow to get to that. It's a very futuristic car from today's standards, even it, even it being 30 years old, and it's just, it's, it's wild. I think with the GT90, Ford was trying to go with this triangle aesthetic, because the taillights are triangles, the carbon outlet for the exhaust is triangle, there's a lot of triangles on the interior, there's triangles on the engine. It was a very bold statement that I think worked in Ford's favor. This is a fully adjustable wheel ring. We have it popped up, but usually it's flat, but when you hit 180 miles an hour, this would pop up like how it is right now to keep you on the ground. Another really cool thing about this car is it has quad exhaust, which is really cool. And how it's in a triangle kind of reminds me of like a Pugani. Pugani's have the triangle exhaust as well. But it's really cool because this bottom piece right here is actually signed by the entire Ford performance team. So it's kind of cool. If you want to go with me on the inside, but before we do that, if you notice, you can really see the bubbleness of this front window going to the roof that's completely glass. Very unique. I don't know another car that has that. So anyways, let's go inside. I'm going to close it. I'm really tall though, so I don't want to die. Okay. On the inside of this, it has a blue and yellow theme. On the seats, it says GT90 in yellow. It also has it on the door panel. This car has a very open look where you can see all the mechanisms working. It has a five speed manual 
It has a carbon fiber center console that's actual carbon fiber. These gauges are basically useless. They look like that they have the darkest window tint possible on them. And this goes back to that yellow theme I'm saying Ford has. The triangle on the steering wheel that literally doesn't do anything is yellow. You have the yellow stitching for the wards of the GT90. Also, another really cool thing to take in on the inside of the GT90 is this is not just leather, but it's also Alcantara, which is really cool. These come stock with a four-point harness, racing harness, because this is meant to be a race car. And it's just really cool. It's a very unique experience. It's a super surreal car, and I am just still blown away that I'm sitting inside of this right now. The way you open the door, I think, is very state-of-the-art and different and very futuristic for 95. You see a lot of hypercars and supercars that have this now, but how you open up this door is you press this yellow triangle thing and it initiates it to pop open. Another thing I want to mention when we're on the inside of it again right here is there's zero visibility to the side on these cars because it goes almost all the way up to the top of the headrest behind you. So you can't see anything on either side of you, which is kind of freaky. It's a very impractical car, but I can see the appeal of this car to people. On the back end of the GT90, it has 355, 30, 19 tires. It has 19 inch rims, which is what that number is. These rims are fully aluminum and they pay tribute to the classic Ford GT40, which is what this whole car is all about. The blue in it complements the whole vibe going with the GT40. It is different from your traditional rims though in the aspect of it doesn't have lug nuts like cars nowadays do. You have to undo this centerpiece almost like a corkscrew. Another really cool thing and what this GT90 is known for is the tire tread it says GT90 on it on the outside of the tires. These are the original tires and they are irreplaceable for that reason. The GT90 has a V12 quad turbo engine that has 720 horsepower and has a max speed of 253 miles per hour. It goes zero to 60 in 3.1 seconds. Uh, one last thing I wanna mention is everything is controlled by remote on the GT90 and this is called the GT90 remote control. So it's kinda cool. So you can control the wing, the engine bay, everything is controlled by this. So it's kinda cool and unique. Some honorable mention things I like to say is the mirror system. It has functional side view mirrors and it has a functional center mirror inside the cockpit. Another really cool thing is all the glass on this car is tinted blue, including the one on the engine bay. So, kind of unique. Thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. Special thanks to IAC Motorsports Museum here in Ames, Oklahoma, who owned this car. It was a very surreal experience. I'm very grateful for it. I'll tag their information below. This was a long drive from Lubbock. It's the first car I've left Lubbock for, so hopefully that happens more often, Lindsay. And <laughs> we'll see you guys next week.